Sharia law, and that some of the Islamophobias were all concerned about that. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding um, by people who are Islamophobe about what that means, the word jihad. Um, I myself understand jihad as a personal struggle, um, whereas I think some people hear it as a holy war. So I, I think maybe, maybe they hear that as terrorists don't support terrorists, and maybe it's just the there's got to be more communication. When I, when I said that, I was citing something that the people who appear to have influenced, well, that's some, that was something that Fred Granby had said during in, an interview during March. Uh, well, I believe it was the Boston area radio station. So he had said that that was his understanding of Islamic charity. And I have never heard such a thing. Okay. So charity in Islam is meant to be given toward needy people. Okay. Orphans, the poor, people who need food, those kind of things. Okay, so so that, that was definitely clearly what I was saying. Right. But let me just say this on the concept of jihad, because it's a word that's been co-opted from our community. And I will take us to task. We've done a terrible job of defending our own terminology. But jihad, you are correct. It is an internal struggle against the temptations. But many people do hear it as holy war. There is a doctrine within Islam of self-defense, just like in any other faith I'm familiar with. If you want to understand what jihad means, it's my right to defend my life, my liberty, and the way I choose to pursue happiness. A couple other points just to... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You, do you have it? You got it, I'll come. Uh, so if you, the contemporary misconstruction of jihad, it's interesting to lay it at the feet where it belongs. The, the idea that jihad is a holy war, the greatest proponent of that belief was the CIA in Afghanistan in the 1980s and 90s, when we were 80s, when we were training the Mujahideen to resist the Soviets. We actively fomented this notion that there was a religious obligation for Muslims to fight against foreign occupation. And it just so happens that we trained many of the people that we today fight. The same thing is true with Saddam Hussein, who we, you know, equipped and sold weapons to for decades before you know he got off his leash. Or Manuel Noriega, before that. Or you could, the, the, the sort of it's interesting how many of our problems we create for ourselves by our sort of blind fumbling. And it's particularly interesting to me that sort of we expand the discussion. I'm going to call it the green sign in the back, the creeping Sharia, no creepy Islamophobia. And going back to the question before about who's un-American or has the best interests of the country at heart, and it does strike me that uh, the allegation might be that Muslims are disloyal, but it strikes me that the people making the allegations have a great deal to answer for, because the, the charge of disloyalty in itself, I think, is very un-American, right? It, it, if we go back to the House Un-American Activities Committee that was you know, conducting the Red Scare investigations into people's political beliefs, how un-American could you be as to claim that some ideas are un-American. Like it, it's, it's like a paradox. It's standing between mirrors, right? If there's anything that is American, it's an openness to ideas that is supposed to be what characterizes us. So it's whoever is claiming that ideologies are scary, that to me is the, is the, is the, is the group that's, that seems disloyal to our country. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely that's it. Well, there's one thing I think that we, we need to say that hasn't been said, which is that um, Lots of people on earth are rightfully afraid of the violent religious fanaticism of all faiths. Um, and there, there are violent religious fanatics in Islam, just like there are in Christianity, just like they are in Judaism and uh, Hinduism. Uh, pretty much every faith now has violent religious fanatics attached to it uh, who labor under the banner of that religion. It was interesting to me that uh, Oklahoma was the first state that took a step to legislate you know, one of these phony anti-Sharia laws when Oklahoma was the victim of uh, a vicious fanatic attack more than a decade ago in the destruction, the, the explosion of the Oklahoma building by fundamentalist Christian fanatics. Um, I mean, they may as well have passed an anti-Christian law at that point. Um, so, um, you know, I, you know I, I appreciate the point that, that, uh, that U.S. foreign policy uh, has been implicated, say, in uh, working with Osama bin Laden and other uh, 
uh, other religious fanatics like you know, opposing the Soviet Union during the Soviet invasion of, again, of, of uh, Afghanistan. But that doesn't uh, console me very much about the religious fanatics that are still out there. I mean, however they got their start, there are religious fanatics uh, operating under the banner of Islam, as there are under a lot of religions, and they should be resisted by peoples of the world, governments of the world, and people of all faiths uh, who want to resist them. And they, I, I don't think there's any reason for anybody um, to be shy about saying that. I mean, those people are enemies of liberal democracy. They're enemies of uh, the 99% plus of humanity that doesn't believe in using uh, terrorism to accomplish political goals. 